Hey everyone, it's Thor at Creative Twilight. Today I wanted to show you a way that I figured out how to paint flames. It's a quick and easy method. I think it looks good. So what I'm going to do is show you the paints that I'm using. So I'll be working this in layers and blending as I go. So we start with Corn Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Troll Slayer Orange, Fire Dragon Bright, Uriel Yellow, and Flash Gets Yellow. So I'm going to be working with this on um, what I'm painting while it's still wet. So to do that, I'm using a wet palette, which is something I recommend in general that you have. But you can see that I've got my wet palette loaded. You don't need one. It definitely makes things easier. So let me uh, get this camera set up and I'll show you how this works. All right, so I'm all set up. So what I'm going to be painting, this is QB. It's uh, what I use to do a lot of practicing on, do tutorials with. Um, so this will be what I'll be demonstrating on. This over here is what I'm going to try to replicate for you. This is when I finally figured out something I liked. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Of course, it comes out different every time, which is realistic. So let's just get to it. So for a brush, also it's worth mentioning, what I'm using here is a Raphael 8404. Um, let's see if I get this in focus. Oh, anyway, it's a size one. You don't have to have a super expensive brush but you do want something that's gonna hold the point and something that's going to have a large enough belly to let you do what you need to do and have a point fine enough to, to create the, the tips of the flames. So I find the size one from the Raphael 8404 works well. So I'll just jump in here. So what I'm gonna do is load my brush with uh, some of the corn red and start laying out the, the basic shape here of what I'm looking to do. So what I'm doing here is creating squiggles, creating the, uh, the tips of the flames and trying to do something that's, that's random, um, which tends to be harder than you think to create random because you're intentionally trying to create something that's random. So it's kind of a catch 22. So I'm just laying out the basic shape here. Uh, hopefully that's working well enough in the camera. And I'm just going to kind of widen some of these out. Again, trying to keep this thin. The corn red, I'm not too concerned about being super thin. It's everything that goes on top of it. That's where your, your real blending is going to come from. So I think... That'll probably be be good for what I'm doing here. So you can see I've got the, the basic shape laid out. Now I'm going to go into the Evil Sun Scarlet. And basically just run inside what I've done. And kind of keep bringing it, uh, coming back a little further and getting lighter as I go. So this is where you want to keep things thin and try to move quickly. So that when you get to the next layer, in this case the orange it's going to start blending with what you've laid down underneath. So you notice this is pretty wet. It doesn't matter if it dries too much, um, but again, the quicker you can go, the better. Now I'm going to hit Troll Slayer Orange. I'm not cleaning off my brush between applications because, again, I'm trying to get, get this to kind of blend naturally. So again, just following everything I've laid down. I just come in and, and keep following it, trying to go a little thinner, pull it back a little more to enhance the light towards the bottom, which would be more natural for fire. And there's kind of these dead zones in here, and I just kind of do this to kind of create some randomness to it. I'm going to hit the orange again, pull it up a little more. And if you goof up and you don't like something, you just go back to the previous color and just lay that down. The other thing I'm trying to do is overlap this um, so the lines kind of run over each other and it just creates this, this cool visual interest. So from here I'm going to go to Fire Dragon Bright. Just more of the same here. You can see how it's, it's blending as it's going on kind of smudges it and stuff, which is why I was saying you want to work quick and work with it pretty wet. I'm 
And I'm just going to kind of fill in some of these areas down there. Now I'm going to hit the Uriel Yellow. This is going to come down even more. This is where it really starts to come together. You're going to start seeing those overlaps more. Some of these I do bring up a little higher just to kind of make it interesting. And again, just kind of fill in down below. Now I'm going to hit the final color, which is a flash gets yellow. Uh, this should be used pretty sparingly, just kind of enhance uh, the, the brighter areas down towards the bottom here. Maybe work some of the overlaps to show that. And just kind of fill in the bottom here. So that's pretty much it. Give this a second to dry and, and talk a little bit, but uh, see if I can get this in the camera better for you all. So you can see the, the result there. Try to get the light off it. And I think that looks pretty good. I mean, spend, what, three, four minutes maybe doing this? Just going back and forth with a lot of wet paint, just creating layers and letting it blend as you go. So it's pretty simple. Um, and like I said, it's it's random, it comes out different every time. So this would be something that's great if you wanted to uh, paint flames on, let's say, the armor of a tank. Uh, could be like a Space Marine shoulder pad, something like that. Um, so this one I did over here, you can see I didn't go as bright with the yellow, so it gave it a different look. You know, you can completely change the colors around to whatever suits you. You know, this one's got a little, little of, well, it's, it's darker. Um, up here, it's it's warmer, looks a little more realistic, and uh, again, it's really simple to do. So, really, that's all there is to it, so I just wanted to show that. Hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll catch you later.